Hello, everybody. Happy to see you on this December 11th. There's 14 days till Christmas. Two weeks from today till Christmas. Yikes! <laughs> Mark got our tree up this morning and some roping up, but we've got quite a ways to go. The hard part's going to be putting all the lights and ornaments on the tree, which I'm not a fan of, but I love the results. So it's kind of Okay, Deb, be a big girl and get it done. So I want to see who is here today. Dolores is here. Hello. And you know what? I got the cutest. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I got the sweetest Christmas card from our Bonnie. You know, Bonnie is very thoughtful. That's one of her most tender traits is that she's so very thoughtful. And I thought I put the card in here because I wanted to make sure to show it. Oh, come on. It was, I am not seeing it right off the bat. I will make sure to show you next week because not only did she send me a card, but she made a handmade Christmas ornament with cross stitch nonetheless. So what a dear heart she is. Okay. And oh, yeah, good. My sound is on. This is great. All right. Let's see. So Debbie's here. Then Marsha, Barbara Smith is back. Oh, so nice to see you. Carol is here. Oh, gosh, we love our Carol. So, oh, let me see. Oh, and I hope, Marcia, you got Polly's email. She was so sweet and wanted to make sure she touched base with you. I love seeing Dolores here. This is great. Alexis is here. And Alexis, I'm so excited about your news that you're going to be going to a craft fair in the spring to sell your beautiful artwork. So that's exciting. I know you're going to be so busy. Plus, you're getting ready to graduate college. Could it get any better? That is terrific. We're so proud of you, sweetheart. So, so proud of you. Okay, let me see. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. Kathy Klein is here. Hi, Kathy. I feel like our Kathy's a famous person because I see her on some pretty uh, well-named blogs or videos, and I'm impressed. So, Jody is here. <sighs> Jody, you shouldn't have. It was an absolute pleasure and a joy this past year to see everyone rally around you was such a joy. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. But you didn't need to do that. <laughs> so, oh, there's Bonnie. Bonnie, I thought for sure it's probably over here in the mess. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. But your card was so sweet. And the cross-stitch tree ornament I'm going to treasure the rest of my life. Thank you so much. So Diana B's here. I have just about finished my quilt. I went around the vinyl and um, zigzagged it. One thing I'm going to tell you, if you do put the vinyl on and you zigzag, make sure you don't blunt. See that top ornament in the middle? I'm probably going to try to carefully pick the stitches on the top loose. I kind of blunted it. Make sure you're doing a nice round globe because otherwise it might look a little odd. But <laughs> oh, that's cute, Kathy. But yeah, you could send me a surprise, but you don't you don't need to. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. But um I just I get so much out of all the things that we do on here and the way we are a community and we rally around each other and support each other 
Y'all are the nicest ladies. When we show each other's artwork, you're so proud of each other. This is wonderful, and it's good for my soul. In fact, honestly, I don't know how I would have gotten through the pandemic and my cancer and all that without you. You just are there for me all the time, and I want to thank you so much. I was hoping to have pictures of my Christmas tree and a few of my decorations, but the only decoration that I've really finished is my mantle. But I will get some pictures because I thought it'd be fun if we want to share any pictures of our Christmas decoration or something that means spe something special. But everybody is a dear, dear heart. And I thank you dearly. So, like I said, I've been running around like a crazy woman. So, I'm trying to think. I am not as prepared for this show as I normally like to be. I didn't make an agenda. I always think I have plenty of time, and I don't. So <laughs> what can we do? But I'm excited to show you a couple things. Now, what did, hmm, what did I do? I ha oh, maybe I laid it back here. Remember my art quilt third? Here it is. That's why I was looking so puzzled. Sometimes I wonder if some of these things get up and walk away. But remember Thursday night we were working on our curvy Christmas tree in the woods. And I had a terrible time trying to get the, the tree pieces to fit. But I knew they had to fit because I cut exactly... The pattern that I printed, some sun is trying to sneak out. <laughs> it's been gray for days. Now, one day I get on here, here comes the sun. But anyway, here is, now I'm going to change a couple things. This is a little too pale, but, but if it had a darker background in front of it. But then when I, I have decided what to do to finish this, and hopefully I'll have it next week. I'm going to have to drop this down just a little. It feels like it's burning my retinas. <laughs> I don't want it to burn my retinas. <laughs> but anyway, I've got some exciting ideas to do with this. And what I'm going to do is I first got to finish stitching all these curves down. And it's going to take a little bit. I was grabbing all of my miscellaneous blues today, hoping I could get it done before the show came on. But um, And then I decided to bring the sky down just a little farther. So I'll be adding to that. Then I'm going to take with black thread, and I'm going to do a zigzag around, tiny zigzag, around each section of Christmas tree. Okay, Because I want them to really pop. And like I said, I'm going to put a darker color right here on the tree. Sometimes when you're planning things in your head, you really have to see it in front of you to make a decision. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, things in our head look differently than reality sometimes. So I'm going to put bring the sky down farther. And then I'm going to... Bank, put some white fabric and bank some snow up against the, the trunk of the tree to make it look like it's snowed in. Then after all the pieces are stitched down, I'm going to come in with some thread painting. I think I might even couch some white yarn as the snow to make it look nice and fluffy. So hopefully by next week, I will show you that and tell you how I did it. But I'm definitely, then I'm going to take and put some, I might do some spatter paint of snow on the sky and the tree. I might do some sequins or some little star shapes. But I'm going to do some thread painting and it'll the snow will kind of help delineate the branches. So that will make it pretty complete. But you see where it needs some more sky to come down farther. 
And uh, I actually think I'm going to bring it down to about here. So I, I did some sky colors, but they're too light. So I'm going to darken that air, bottom area of the tree, bring down some slightly darker areas of the sky, then do some thread painting of snow, maybe, um, ooh, you know, it might be pretty to put some thread, some silver, or I have a white, I have a white iridescent, and try to do a few little snowflakes or stars in the sky. So my next step is to embellish this to bring it to life. You can even start here and do some painting, fabric painting. Ah, uh, maybe I could try to find, put some beading, like with some sequins and put a, a, a nice shiny little seed bead in the center of the sequin to hold it on. So that's where I'm going to go with that. And Diana, here it is. I've got the binding on most of it. I've got a length in the bottom, but the but I stitched on the I stitched down the vinyl. The vinyl stitched beautifully. It didn't tear. It wasn't hard to stitch. It just went through like butter. I wouldn't have known I was stitching on vinyl. The only thing when you're stitching on vinyl, if you have a Teflon foot or a nylon foot, use it because the regular feet tend to kind of want to drag a little bit. And that might have been what kind of led to some of my flattened out places on the quilt. But I adore Adore that quilt. I love it. It's going to go in a very prominent place. And by the, in fact, let me bring it a little closer. By the um, response that I've gotten from people, y'all love it too. So it has been the most requested pattern I've made. And I just think it's absolutely adorable. I really do. So, now one thing that the vinyl also does, with the shine on it, the pieces underneath don't show up quite as clearly. So, if you've been kind of teetering on whether you want vinyl or not, remember that your work, people will have to come up to it to see your work because it does kind of mask it down. But I absolutely love it. I think those snowmen are so adorable. And I love that we put the little puppy here and the little sewing things and the bird, the bird up on that one. And it's just beautiful. The other thing I love about it is we can keep it up and all winter until spring. And any type of quilt that has months worth of relevance is a lot of fun. So if you're going to make it, then hey, you know, so I'm excited. Then uh, I am, you know what, it's so much fun. Every year I do Christmas ornaments and try to find ideas. Every year, they come out with something just a little different. The last couple of years, the burlap using good old twine, good old garden twine for ornaments. I would love to have a tree form and just glue twine all the way down the tree form. And then maybe cut out little ornaments out of little um, buffalo plaid. I mean, there are just so many things. So remember I told you last week, I had these um, paper mache balls. It is so funny. If you've ever had a paper mache, something like a ball, what it is, it's a plastic ball that they then glue the paper on. I guess that makes sense because you can't crush it, you know. But um, so I got those five-inch squares, those buffalo squares out. I found it's kind of hard to get two of them to fit good. So I started looking online. What did other people do? Well, you could get you could get it by the yard and put it on, 
but you still got to try to cut it. And I tried very hard dividing it into four quadrants. This one was an ex example, just trying to see what it might look like. So it's not my best, you know, just know that always try stuff out on one. And, um, oh, thank you, sweetheart, Carol. Gosh, you're so good at that. So, um, I found, oops, two pieces aren't going to do it. And this is part this plaid, part this plaid. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one. Then I tried another one. I tried this one. Well, this one looks better. But then you see where I cut a bunch of pieces and tried to piece it together. I thought, that's not going to work. I tried really hard to cut this one so that we would, you know, you kind of have that oval shape, that long oval. But even that has a couple areas where it's just not what I wanted. And even if you did it by the yard, it's really hard to make those, the, what you think is the perfect pear shape, really fit. So then I said, well, what are other people doing? So I, I have spent so much time on the computer the last few weeks. But I went looking. And one good place to look if you're ever wanting to know how to do something is go to Etsy. Because those people make stuff to sell. What I found is their quadrants kind of, you know, you can see the seam. And, and you wish in a way you didn't, but that's the only way you can make it. Then the other thing was they took about half inch, five inch, maybe five eighths of an inch strips. And just started and put strip, 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 strip. And actually, I liked it. Yes, there's a ton of seams, but it kind of gives it a rustic look. And then that way, they don't get so stressed out with when you hope everything is going to come together at one little central point. It takes the stress out of it. So what I'm probably going to do to try to save these is maybe take some of the twine and glue it on the seams maybe some ribbon, something like that. But I'm going to try to find a way. Now, this one with the two different plaids, I'm sorry, but that's just ugly. So I'm going to, I'm going to probably peel the fabric off and do something a little different with that one. But um, I, I like showing you these things because it might give you some ideas. And then if I can kind of tell you how it worked, so that you can figure out what's a good way for you. But I do love that plaid. And uh, all right, now. And it's just so fun. I got these from Joann's. And look, so it's green ribbon with like white stitching, red, and then tan. And I love the tan because I'm going to, I even got some upstairs. I got a bunch of things in, but it's, I've been too busy to open up, see what came in. So it's been crazy. But um, what was I, what else was I going to say? So, but I will, next week, I'm going to show you this quilt. Next week, I will show you the finish of this quilt, the finish of that one. But we're going to mostly deal with ornaments. And we've now done this quilt, and I've done the curvy quilt, and now this one. And so it's going to be time to play with ornaments. I have so many ideas. And now I have extra incentive to get the house decorated because my son called and said, they're coming down the day after Christmas. So I'm so excited. He always lets me know kind of like late last minute, although he probably thinks this is not last minute. Well, only because I'm an old woman, it takes me time to do stuff. But anyway, but it's going to be fun. And um, so I want to get out all the Christmas decorating and it'll be a very quick visit, which you know what? 
sometimes those are the very best. You just put all your best things into that little bit of time. All right. So would you like to see what we're working on today? This quilt I saw, because I wasn't going to do any more quilts. I thought, let's just do ornaments. But I saw this and fell in love with it. I fell in love with it because it is, um, it is dramatic. I fell in love with it because of its simplicity. I fell in love with it because it's fusible. You don't have to piece it. <laughs> and the colors are magnificent. And this black in here is kind of, I'm trying to, let me see. I think that's the quilting you're seeing in the swirls. Yes, that's the quilting you're seeing in the swirls. Like snow swirling. I love that. But look at the simplicity. I wish I knew who had done this. The tiny little stems. I love, too, that when the trees overlap, you get a different color. I think that's really cute. So, I didn't know who made this. I must have seen it on Pinterest. And sometimes you can't figure out where the things came from. But whoever did that or bought it up, way to go. It's beautiful. So, this week, what I did is I made up a bunch of patterns. They're on our group. But if you would like the patterns yourself, just send me an email and I'll be glad to send them out to you. Now, I'm going to tell you, I did all kinds of miscellaneous patterns and I tried to be very careful for the patterns that had two pieces because the colors shift where the trees overlap. But some of this you may have to get creative. Look at the picture and then when I finish this, I will put up a picture. I'll send you a picture of mine. And that way you can kind of figure out what did she do to request all oh, Carol. Gosh, you're a doll baby. I'm so tired. I have been having a hard time falling asleep. I do this when I get too excited and too, have too much pressure on me. And so I took a little something to try to help me relax. Then didn't want to wake up this morning because I never do. I'm very sensitive to medications. So I try to stay away from it. But sometimes, you know, ugh. But sometimes you just need a tiny bit of help. And yesterday... I cleaned the house, the whole house, and then started decorating and then said, okay, now I better work on the show today. I probably should have, instead of cleaning the house, I probably should have worked on the show. But the dust bunnies were turning into big dust bunnies. <laughs> And, you know, they reach a size I can't ignore them anymore. You know what I mean? It's just like, that's too big. So, got to do something. So, I got out that dust mop and then got out the vacuum cleaner. Normally, I clean the vacuum cleaner twice when I'm doing the house. I cleaned it out three times yesterday. Big dust bunnies. <laughs> All right. So, here is my version of that quilt and I just love it in some ways I love the black better because it gives a stark contrast but I like to try to do things just a touch different and so here this is and what I may do which I often do is take a black permanent like a micron pen and just do a fine outline to define each tree. So here is the background I used. Now, instead of just doing a quilt, I thought, do a table runner. I just never know when to say, good enough is good enough. <laughs> 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this. It's got two more trees to go on it, and then I'm going to repeat this. But anyway, so I love it. And I thought the reason I chose this sky blue is, well, blue is my favorite color. But I thought, well, with the, having the little speckles on it, it kind of looks like snow. So I still think I like it, even though that black is pretty dramatic. But what I may do, like I say, is just outline the trees or stitch them down with black thread. Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, that's wonderful. I just love it. And, you know, and with this, don't forget, you can also do a little thread painting. I'm thinking that white snow-like thread painting. I love that this person did her quilting to look like snowy winds. See that? Well, I'm thinking that a white, whitish silver thread doing the snowy winds would be really awesome. So I'm going to look into that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a couple of these trees so that you can see what goes in, what decisions. Like some of them, I didn't realize the tree behind was just a little glimpse. So what I, I, I've kind of honed the process as I've gone. So let me move the camera over. Any other questions? Isn't that amazing? We are having the best, best time. And don't forget, these are on our group's I.O. If you want to become a member of our group, please send me an email at the same email address. I'm really pretty good with emails. I get back to you pretty quickly. And, but, um, we've got them on our site in the files section. So I made sure that I put the swirly tree pattern. I'm hoping Mary... I don't see Mary on here, but I'm hoping Mary, I sent her an email trying to answer. She was like, what is with these weird nose looking parts of the pattern? So I was like, okay, I probably need to explain that a little more. But in fact, there is something I'm supposed to, uh, somebody wrote in needing some advice. Ooh, I've got to make sure to remember that. So, let me see. I am going to bend this paper clip and put it on my computer monitor that I check when I'm talking to you. And hopefully, remember, Laura's here. Bonnie, it's so nice to be spending time with you, darling. So, what I've done is, as I use the fabrics of the trees, I've tossed them back here. And I thought, instead of adding a bunch of more fabrics... Because I, what I did is I took this picture over to my stash and started picking fabrics. And at first, I picked out greens because I just glanced at that and thought, oh, those are greens. And then when I sat down with them, I said, no. What I even told y'all, what I loved was they were jewel tones. And if you look, the greens have a little teal in them. And that's what gives it the magic. So I took this over to pick out some fabrics. I have pulled 30 fabrics, I bet. And just more to clean up. But that's how my room gets so messy. Because, you know, I'm just sitting there pulling out stuff. I've got a stack now on the counter. But I'll get to it. You know... It's plenty of time to clean up and sleep after Christmas. <laughs> right now, it's too much fun. All right, so I'm going to bring the camera over. Okay. And I am excited because we're going to get a new camera arm. That's going to be so wonderful. All right. All right, so this... And let me put the picture where you can see it because that's what I'm using. What I've got done now, the last one I've done is this pink. Now, the, I did an orangey here because my focus fabric, let me show you a piece of, this is the tree. 
this tree, I'm going to take gold thread or a bright yellow gold DNC flo DMC floss, and I'm going to make this snowflake on top. I love that snowflake. It has a simplicity about it. It's just beautiful. And, oh, thank you, sweetie. And so here is the focus fabric I chose. I love it because it has swirls and motion. And that tends to pull in all the other colors, which I always think is important. So now when you see these patterns, let me explain something about the patterns. This tree is going to be 12 inches tall, but the paper to print it is not 12 inches. So it has, it's numbered four and four, and I think it, I might have put four and four A. So you cut this piece off the second piece and you put a piece of tape across. Now you have the full 12 inch uh, template. This piece Okay, let me show you this tree. This tree is this one right here. And see where, where the trees overlap? She did a brighter color. I just think that's precious. I love everything this, this artist did. And so what I did is I went on EQ8 and I designed these. This separate little piece right here will be a lighter version, but put with this tree. When you look at this, actually, I think it's supposed to be this tree overhangs, but I ended up putting the highlights on the piece that it looks like it sticks to, like this one and this one. Okay. Now, um, and this one. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be this tree that's hanging over, but to me, it looks more like it's on this piece, so that's how I designed the puzzle piece. So uh, what I do is I mark everything when I cut it. I make sure I know the height of it. And I tape the extra piece on. There's one other thing I forgot to do. I thought I did it with the pattern. The main tree, the main focus tree, I made three and a half inches across the base instead of three inches like the rest of them. So what I did when I cut out this one, which is the 11 and 3 quarter inch, I cut left the seam allowance that the printer made for it. And that way you get three and a half inches. So with this one, and what you have to do then is taper the seam allowance so it's the widest at the bottom. And that gives this tree just a little more up. So here's an 11 inch tree. Now, 10 inches, I could fit that on. So some of them, you might go, oh, I kind of, at one point, I needed like a 12 and a half or something, and I didn't have it. Well, if you realize, oh, I want this tree to be a little longer, then just remember when you cut the fusible, add a half an inch to it. So it's not really hard. This is 11 half D. And what you'll do is when I print I, since I don't know who did this and if it's copyrighted, I'm hesitant to email this to you. Um, but what I'm going to do is take a picture of mine and that can be your go-to. I just never want to step on people's toe, designers' toes. Um, but I love their design so much. I'm enjoying doing this. So this is a 10-inch piece with a bigger... This one is for this tree right here. See, this tree stops at this height right here. All right, so now when I did this and put it together, I realized this piece cuts off a corner of it. So what I did is just would fold back when I put the fabric on it, just folded back the right amount, marked where it had to go, folded it back, and clipped it off. I didn't want lots of thick layers. So anyway, just showing you 2D means a double piece. Okay, and this piece fits perfectly over here. 
here is a 13 inch. I think our biggest is 14. And let me see. I thought I had a 14. But I tried to make a plenty of different. Yeah, here our biggest is a 14. Now look at this funny piece. Okay. I'll show you what tree that comes from. That comes from this tree right here. And so I'm I'm just using this as a solid, as one piece. I have this little piece cut out, and that's this piece. If you took this piece and taped it in here, that's why it looks that way. So, and then you just kind of eyeball. So I, I hope I've explained the pieces I've cut accurately. And so there may be one where you want, well, here's a 12 and a half. Got two 12 and a half, so 13, a 10. And you can always alter these. Now, there's two of these trees because there is this one that just had a little bit here. And then this one that had a bigger amount showing. What is so cute is the stems are made out of the main tree fabric. Skinny little stems. And I just love, I said, Deb, copy, do as much from this because it, to me, is a perfect work. I adore it. So, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I've got the two-tone pink one. Now I'm going to come in with the very darkest tree in the whole thing right there. And I can tell you that that's a good... 14 inch tree I would say so the darkest fabric I have is this one and boy it's going to be pretty dark but I still think it's a good fabric you, you just you want contrast that's what I love about this and it's a Jenny Buyer so hello so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a piece, and it's going to be, this one is going to be 14 inches, so I need to tear off a piece, three inches wide. Now, I'm so stingy on fabric that honestly, when y'all weren't looking, <laughs> I would lay the fabric and cut only what I needed. But I don't want to be silly now because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I just cut a piece roughly three inches wide by 14 inches long. And let me... Let me put this back over here. Now, let me get my iron heated up. Make sure that when you, if you're going to iron here, that you don't have any of the fusible underneath. Make sure you have a nice, clean area with which to work. Now, let me get a brand new piece of this because I'm going to show you what you can do. I'm using the steam -a seam again because it's right here and it's easy. Now let me find that 14 inch piece. 10, 10, 12. Okay. All right, hold on. I know we just saw it, so it will be here. All right. Now I, ah, this one, the 14 inch has a piece out of it. Maybe I'll use a 13 inch. Let me see. Let me look one more time. I think I can do a 13. I can always add a little bit more to it if I want. And don't forget. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. So, now what I do, what I'm going to do, is to cut this out as one piece. I'm going to lay it diagonally on 
on this. And that way I don't have to piece my fusible. Now, if you have fusible that's on a roll, that's not just the letter size pieces, then that would work really well. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm taking an ink pen so that I get a clean line. Now, always, if you're using Steam Scene 2, always use the blank side because if you use this grid size side, the way it peels, you would have to mirror image it. So, for me, this is easier. Also, when you're cutting out these trees, if you have a paper rotary cutter, I would recommend you do that. But if not, use a long pair of scissors because these trees are very striking for being perfect, narrow triangles. You don't want them wavy at all. And when you hand cut, sometimes you get it, you get the edges a little wavy. I've had to go back on some of these. And smooth them out to get a nice straight edge. So if you have a rotary cutter blade that you don't mind using on um, paper, then go for it. I think that would be the best. So now, this one, believe it or not, is going to have to have some edges cut off of it. That's what I was telling you about just being creative. And I'm going to peel the paper off this. But this, the sticky side always sticks towards the yellow. Now, with something like this, I'm going to... I'm, I, like I say, I hate to waste anything. So I'm going to put this near the edge. It does mean I'll get a little bit of a bias. So please be careful not... To, I'll tell you what, well, yeah, that's good. Be careful not to let it um, bend on you when you're laying it on the base fabric. But if I just have this slightly curved on the fabric, it makes better use of the fabric, and I might get another one for the next group out of the rest of this. All right, and I'm just going to cut it out on the line. This is a lot this is so relaxing and fun. Once you gather just the right fabrics, and like I said, I had to go back over three times because I would pick something and I thought, nope, once I got it here and started to use it, it wasn't right. So I went back over. And Polly, if you want to shop my stash, give me a holler. And... Uh, because I, oh, I am such a lover of jewel tones. I tend to always buy jewel tones. And so, sadly, sometimes I need yellows and oranges. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't have enough of those. But I've got tons of blues and purples and teals and, oh, you name it. So, and this quilt has a couple Jenny Buyer fabrics in it, which always makes me very happy. All right, so now I've got this. Just peel off the back, and I cut it slightly longer just so in case it, it needs for any reason to be longer. So peel off the paper. As soon as you peel off the back paper of fusible, please put it in a trash can. If you just drop it on the floor thinking, I'll get it later, and then you stand up and go to walk somewhere, you will fall. So, and I don't know about y'all, but I try never to fall. All right, so this tree, now this is really a dark one, so I'm going to have to outline this one. But, okay, this one's going to come in here, and it's actually, you can see, whoops, no, you can't. <laughs> You can see where it hits the pink tree right there. 
because that's what gives it the look to change colors. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it beside this tree. It goes longer than the pink tree. Uh-oh. Let me see. Yeah, that's right. It goes behind. Okay. I was thinking that doesn't work. Okay. Can't be as long as the next one. All right. Now, I'm just going to put this here for a second. What I'm going to do now is fold this back right here. Fold this back. Get my scissors. Now, one thing I have to do, I'm going to leave plenty here to go under the bottom of this. But I'm just going to fold this back because I don't want this to be all bulky. I'm going to fold it back and then trim it off so it barely covers the edge of the pink tree next to it. And cut it all the way up. When I was making the patterns, I didn't stop to realize that some of the trees would, oh, that looks like it's supposed to go underneath. Now, then I'll come here and do a careful little trim, but always fold back the fabric to make sure you've got it correct, and then give it a good little pinch so you can see the crease line, and cut it one thread's width longer than the crease line. All right, now... Hold on just a second. Let me move something here. I'm going to show you something before we go, too. All right. So now just make sure this goes below here. And it needs to, this fabric needs to end even with the light pink. So what I'm going to do is fold that back. To match, let me see if I can get it a little bit, whoops, now this is where I might cause myself a problem, let's see, oh, yay, okay, so I'm just folding it back to go in line, if you're not sure you'll get the right angle, then just put a ruler here, you fold it back to that, give it a really good pinch, and then trim it off, a hat, give it an extra thread width to trim it off. And then make sure the top is straight. Okay. I used this piece to put the, to put that highlight, but then I forgot, whoa, if I don't want a big thick overlap. Now, now I'm going to show you. Okay. So that's, and, and the edges of these two are right in line, and there's the top. But this one, I'll probably take a light color, and hmm, I was hoping I had a light color here to, to use. No, I don't see. Let me, hold on, let me peek in. My messy drawer here. Whoop, there's a white chalk box, but no white chalk. Nope, no blue. Hmm. Hmm. Here's white chalk. Let me just see. I'm going to use chalk because if I don't like it, I can always then brush it off. But let's see if... You see that? So by taking this chalk, I can see what would that look like if I did a, a little outline. This way, you can't see it as good as I can see it right here. So, all right. All right. Look. I was trying to read what was written. Okay, look at that. Look how that outlining that. 
really did a good job. And I think by outlining the rest in black, that's going to help them pop. I just love it when things are very defined. Okay? All righty. So now uh, that tree is done. Although I am going to have to trim a little piece off over here. But I'll show you that. All right. So now my last fabric in this line in this sequence, and you know, I don't think, I might be able to get two passes of this done. Or maybe I should cut it and make, go ahead and make the whole length, cut it in half and give one to somebody. <laughs> oh, I just love it so much. I, the older I get, the less likely I'm like, oh, just give it away. <laughs> like, whoa, wait, wait for me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off this piece. And I'm about positive this is a Jenny Byer. Yep, Outback by Jenny Byer. Her fabrics are so gorgeous. So this one, let me see, roughly three inches. And I don't, let me see, this one's going to be a little shorter. So I think this is good enough right here. All right. This one is going to have a light color on it where it slightly overlaps this one here. I'm not going to cut off the edge of this where it overlaps until this tree is made because I, all right, I don't want to take a chance. Here's the pattern piece. You see this? See this tree right here? I cut it. I decided that was going to be 10 inches and see that little, little light highlight area right there. Okay. That I made this design, this pattern piece with that tree in mind. So I need two pieces of it. I take before, I don't know if y'all do this. When I take something that I know has to come off, I stick it to my shirt. And then tape, put tape it so that it won't tear. So this one, let me grab. Okay, this will do this. Okay. I have, this is all sticky. Okay. Now, I'm going to take, nope, don't put that on that. But put it on here. Let me iron this fabric real quick. I can't stand putting fusible on wrinkly fabric. It's one of my pet peeves. All right. Which side is pretty? I'll just put this right here. Okay. Now I can... Just want to make sure I had enough. Now I'll put this on here. Whoop. All right. So, Miss Bonnie, are you cooking anything good today? I've got some caldo verde in the crock pot that I put in this morning. That is a Portuguese dish that back when I was a Catholic, we had a priest that I dearly loved, and Father Pereira. And he was um, from Portugal originally. And so he was coming up to visit us. He's my son's godfather. He was coming up to visit us. And so I looked up. In a recipe book, I wanted to find a um, Portuguese recipe to make him. And I looked up and found caldo verde, which means green soup. And my, I thought the kids won't eat it, but at least I'll have it for Father Pereira. And then I made him a, a loaf of Portuguese bread. 
Well, my kids ended up loving it. I mean, loving it. And it's been a family favorite ever since. And especially if it's cold or wet or damp and you're just feeling a little under the weather, it is the best thing to have. So I'll tell you real quick how you make it while you're watching me cut this paper. All right. So what I did is I cut up an onion. I cut up some garlic. And then I... Normally, I would saute it in like a half a cup of olive oil. The olive oil is very important. It flavors the whole soup. But if you don't have olive oil, then vegetable oil. And so then I took, I don't have the, the pure um, Portuguese sausage that they call for, but I use a good kielbasa. And so I slice that into coins, I guess you call it, little rounds. And I saute that up in the pan so that you can get a little bit of the flavor from the browning of it. Then, so for, this is the first time I've made it in a crock pot. But I knew I'd be busy with y'all. So it was like, I think it'll cook itself. So I took and added a bunch of chicken broth. I added the onion the browned, slightly brown, sautéed um, kielbasa. Then I took a large potato, washed it real good, and sh shredded it. You, you know, grate it. And then I put that in there. And then, um, let me see. Onion, garlic, chicken broth. Oh, I soaked... Normally, I soak some white beans, like California white beans. And, okay, this one's going to go about right here on this. So now what I can do, this is going to go about right here. I soaked some, um, I think I had pinto beans. I wanted some, they were a pink bean. That I put, so I soaked those overnight, drained them, and so I added those. Whoops, I just put that on the wrong piece. Oh shoot, Deb. Okay, hold on. Let me let me concentrate, and I'll tell you the rest of the recipe. Because evidently, I that won't show. Where is my little piece that I cut? Mm. Oops. What did I do with it? I hope I didn't throw it in the trash. Huh. I had made a little piece. Let me see. Darn it. I already had cut it. That's what I get for talking about recipes. Well, I will make another one. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Is this it? Hold on. Let me see. Ha ha, I can use this. Here's a piece I had left over. And let me cut it real quickly. So I brown the kielbasa. I put that. I put the soaked, pre-soaked beans. I put a grated potato, chicken broth, onion, garlic, some nice ground pepper. And the last thing I added right before I came down to do the show was I took kale, pulled it off the stem, and like did a chiffonade, but I didn't do it real small. I just kind of gathered it up and sliced it down and, um, and put that in there. And now it's going to cook until we're done with the show. Ah, what did I do? I thought for sure. Oh. Here it is. <laughs> okay. I'll use this one for the repeat round. But anyway, I think I've gotten all the ingredients. Then I put some coarse ground pepper. You salt it if you need to. The kielbasa usually gives it pretty good salt. But you just let it cook until everything is tender. And oh my gosh, it's so good. And I, it's... it. With the chicken broth, I'm a big believer in the health of chicken broth. <laughs> now, how ma it makes you healthy, but or feel better anyway.
But with the chicken broth and then the kale, I feel like it's a really good um, soup. So if you ever want a really good warm soup, have that with some crusty bread and butter. And, oh, uh, life is good, good, good. All right. So this one is going to go right here, up here. All right. This. Whoops. Nope. It goes farther away. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. This piece right here comes here. And it comes in pretty good here. And goes. And what I'm going to do. and In fact, I just line it up with the edge here. Then I'm going to come in with the chalk. I'm going to make a chalk line. And that will help me cut this. All right. I pull this up. Pull it back to the chalk line. All right. Fold it. Make a nice crease. And it's a little sticky, but you can do it. And then cut that off, leaving the chalk line. Okay, there we go. So now I come back in and put this piece right there. Oops. I think I cut, I cut off too much. I'll, I'll add a piece of that back. Because it's supposed to go up like this. All right. Let me get a piece of that back that I just threw in there. I needed this little quarter inch to go across the bottom right there. All right. So there's that. Now I'll come put this right here. And you line this up perfectly with the bottom of the light piece. And then make sure, the one thing you want to do is make sure your lines go straight. Some of these I had to, re, you know, kind of tweak because they started to kind of turn a little. And especially if I've cut it on a little bit of a bias, just keep making sure that you lay it back out flat. Okay. And make sure, keep looking and see. Now, does this look good? I think it does. And then I thought I had a stem piece. Let me see. Oh, and one thing is to get these, get this piece, keep these pieces together. That's why I tape them like that. All right. If I can't find a stem piece, I'll make another one. And you just take and... Cut a very narrow piece. All right. You know, it's funny. I didn't realize before I got on camera that it's very easy to move things aside and kind of lose track of your stuff. And uh, that's, you know, now I know why they work so hard and have everything organized. Because it's tricky. All right, so I'm going to put this here. See how I just did a little matching? And I just check and see how long is that little trunk. This one's longer. This one's a little shorter. That's a nice long, 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 little shorter, long, short. Okay, so they can vary just a little bit, and that's all good. And I'm going to cut the excess off of this and making sure that that little stem is skinny and straight because that's what gives it its charm is skinny and straight sometimes i make them slightly wider at the base okay oh i know what i saved i saved this piece to make this stem or trunk i keep saying stem but it's a trunk oh, let me give this a quick little iron so it'll stick okay now peel it. Mm. 
Okay. All right. Now I'll peel this and put this right down here. And you've got to, you know, find what you think is the middle. There you go. All right. This is good. All right. So put that down. Now we need to cut a piece of this for the stem right before that one. I just want to make sure it's nice and straight. This is not a time for curvy stems or curvy trunks. I keep doing that. Okay, this one's not too long, so don't make this one too long. All right. And I'm looking. They're pretty close. All right. So find the middle of what that tree would be and put this on and then cut the excess off and now if I like the way these look then hmm. all right it's a good one now I'll hold this up this is the original one two three four five six seven eight nine ten trees so now I'll hold this up and what I'm personally going to do is keep on going after the camera goes off. But this way I thought I can have some of it done and some of it I want to show you on camera so you see how I figure out how to do some of the little intricacies. Because, you know, when I was looking at it, I didn't stop to think, oh, my goodness, that this tree only gets this little bit. So... And what I would do, like in, in that piece, let me show you. I've got a piece in here that I dealt with that right here. See, this This is a 12-inch piece. And what I did is I folded it and folded it. And there we go. That's that tree. So that way I knew just to make this size pattern. But I only fold it because that way then I can open it back out and use it for this one. All right. So let me hold it back up for y'all. Then I'm going to show you one more thing and then we'll go to show and tell. Okay. Here it is. Isn't that sweet? I really, really like that. Really, really like that. What's funny is on the, this is really a pink, a light marbled pink, but so often when I hold it up, it looks white, but it's, it's marbled pink. Certain colors aren't easily picked up by the camera. So, what do you think? Is this a keeper? All right. So I will, in fact, can do it right now. Let me take a picture of this. And hopefully it, Carol can find something really good. But at least I'll have this picture. Come on. Come on. All right. Yeah, I want to get a good enough picture so that you can see what I'm doing. And if you want it larger, then you can just add more trees as well. Okay. I got two pictures. You can see which one turns out best. And... Hi, Edwin Easton. So, I think this is really, really cute. And, whoops, let me turn my camera back around. I think this is really cute. Whoops, go this way. All right. 
really, really cute. And see what I mean about easy? I just did, well, some of the trees I had done, but you get to see the point. You see how quickly, hold on. <laughs> you see how quickly I was able to get those trees done. And both of those trees had the little inset shadow thing. So, but anyway, I love it. All right. So I'm going to put this aside right now and show you one more thing that we're going to do. One more thing. Next week, I am going to teach you how to make the, um, oh, that's where those scissors went. I'm going to teach you how to make the folded stars that we're seeing everywhere. And, but I didn't have time today to, um, what am I looking for? I didn't have time today to have them cut out and practice. So, but I thought, well, let me bring the fabric down. And I had the cutest fabric to go with this and ordered it online. And Joanne Fabrics came back with, oh, sorry, we sold out of that. It was so cute. Really, 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 really made me sad. But I said, well, I have the rest of this. And that's as long as you have a contrast. I think that's that's fine. And if you go looking for fabric to make these, buy cheap fabric that feels like paper. And you'll see why. It's a good idea. All right. Let me, before I cut fabric, I love tearing selvages off because I like to have one day I'm going to do something with these selvages. I'm not sure when that day is, but I've got a bag full of selvages. And one day I'll find something and go, that's why I saved them. Or one day somebody will throw them out and go, she doesn't need that. <laughs> All right. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. When you... Number one, get cheap fabric that's kind of stiff. That's a good thing. You can take some heavy starch and starch the fabric. Or I'm going to show you a different way. And the way, the reason I'm going to do it is I'd like to be able to store this, these fabric stars up with my regular Christmas decorations in the attic. And I'm just nervous about putting starch in something that's going to go into the attic. I don't want to invite vermin to come. In fact, Mark came over to the window a few minutes ago and had two traps that he got out of the camper and with dead mice in them. And he was like so proud of himself. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think this is the hard one to use. So let me see. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut out fabric strips that are four inches wide. Okay. Oh, I'm going to cut at least three four inch wide fabric strips. And I've never made one of these stars, but at when I, I watched the, the last homely house east of the sea, and I watched her do it, and I thought, oh, I can do that. All right, so I've got three of these fabric strips. And I forget, they're going to end up being like 10 inches or a foot long. So I should be able to get four strips out of the width of fabric. So four times three is 12, and that's enough for what, six stars, something like that. Maybe I'll go ahead and cut one more four-inch width place piece. All right. Whoops. Make sure your fabric stays lined up there. Because I want, these are probably going to be something when I go to my doctor's appointment, 
I'll take these to give to the doctor. These are going to be the little gifts I give. Speaking of little gifts, I saw the cutest YouTube video of someone leaving treats out for the delivery people. And I said, Mark, can you get one of those boxes of the, the individual chip bags and um, some water bottles? And I've got a set up on the front porch with a little note thanking them for their hard work because we ordered everything online. And I got to be out there yesterday. I happened to be out there when one guy came out. And he was, he was happy. And I thought, they're working so hard right now. And let's be honest. I appreciate their hard work because I don't have to go out and do the shopping myself now. And that's awfully nice. All right. So I'm going to put the rest of this. Sorry, this is such a big piece. It's actually kind of nice fabric. Um, it was when you order it online, it's two yard minimum. So, but luckily it was pretty cheap. So, okay. Now I'm going, this end is all cut up where I cut it to do things with it. So I'm going to start at the other end. All right. And these pieces don't have to be perfect because the reason they don't have to be perfect is you're going to iron them. So let's say if, you know, the edge is one of the long strip edges is a little wonky, you just tuck it under. All right. So pull this, pull that. Okay. Now, I think I did one, two, three, four, five. Five strips. I'm going to do five of this. All right. Put this right here. One, two, three, four. You know what? I'm going to show you. I try to always show you things that work well. So let me... Let me see. Is this? Yes. I love, love, love these rulers. I mean, these are the June Taylor. Some different kind of companies make them also. But I love this ruler. In fact, you can see how much it's been used and dinged. And Mark says, well, shouldn't we get you a new one? No. No. <laughs> I love it. Now, let me show you. The benefit, I'm going to even up this. The benefit of a June Taylor ruler is you put it in place. You have your fabric. It's lined up along here. Then you sit here and you go four, eight, twelve. That quick. Look at that. I cut three strips in the time it took me to do one the other way. So this, I love this. I feel like that this cuts my cutting time, well, three quarters by three quarters. I only end up cutting a quarter of the time it used to take. So now I've got it lined up. I've got it even. And I'll do one. How big? Oh, four inches. Four and eight. Boom, boom. There we go. Isn't that simple? So, if you need to buy a ruler, if you need an idea for Christmas present, then ask for a slotted ruler, June Taylor or whichever kind. All right, so now this is the next thing I, I'm going to do because I don't want to put starch in this if it's going to go in with my Christmas decorations. Uh-oh. Oh, hi. Um, Michelle, are you sick, sweetheart? Oh, my gosh. Aw. Okay, now, so then what I'm going to do with this, is 
I'm going to cut a good size piece of this. This is fusible interfacing, but it's it's a nice lightweight. Nice lightweight. You don't need a medium weight or heavy weight. Nice lightweight. Michelle, I hope you feel better, sweetheart. Gosh. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these... And I'm going to lay them on the fusible. Make sure my iron's nice and hot. I'm just going to come in here and lay these on. And you notice I like to cover with the fabric on top because I don't want any of it peeking out to get on my iron. All right. Okay. Be careful and don't touch your iron. And I feel the bumpy side of the fusible is facing up. So I know I have it set right. All right. Oops. Let me loosen this. If you ever get a little bump or crease in your fusible, just hit the iron to it again, lift the fabric up, and smooth it out. All right. And this one's going to go here. Whatever way you want to do it, Whoops, I ran that tip right over the fusible, but luckily I caught myself pretty fast. All right, so now what I'm going to do, if I still, I can't, if I were willing, I could put the cutting mat under here and then run the rotary cutter, but the one thing about always working on the ironing board with you is I have to be careful what I put the iron down on. And so if I had the cutting board still under here, I guarantee you I'd forget and run right over it. So just go over it good. Make sure it's well stuck. Okay. And what you're going to end up doing, pretend this has the fusible on it. You're going to fold it in half like that. Then you're going to fold. Once you have, let me show you real quick. Put a crease down here, right down the center. Okay. Then you're going to fold this in to the middle and this in to the middle. Come on. I'm trying to do it fast. Okay. So then... Those are each into the middle, so then you end up with a one-inch wide strip like this, okay? So that's, and that, the rest of this is going to need fusible on it, too. And then I would just come back with this. Oop, turn it over this way. Make sure you feel the bumpy side. But I'm going to do the same thing to the red. And I'll cut more to do the other end of each strip. Fusibles rarely are 44 inches wide. They're just usually 20 inches. So you have to, you know, do it a little bit at a time. And since these, you want four inch inter intervals. Cut your fusible. I got lucky and it worked out. But otherwise, cut your fusible in multiples of four inches. So, like for these five pieces, if this is a 20-inch um, long piece, then it fits perfectly. I just got lucky. All right. So, here, whoops, don't do that, Deb. Be careful to tack it down before you just start 
ironing away. All right, so make sure these are all ironed well. Then do the other end of them. Then cut them out. And then next week, if you show up and you have them, then we'll just start folding stars. Okay? So there. All right. That's the last thing I wanted to show you. Because um, on something like cutting those, folding those stars, I have to watch the person do it. And then... Um, do it right while I'm watching them. I don't do well with reading instructions. I'm a visual learner, so it helps to see it. So if you're visual learners, then that's why I try to say, if you want to do this, show up with me, you know, have this part done, show up with me, and then I'll teach you. So if you wish to, if you have some scraps, don't think you have to have Christmas fabric. You can use fabric the color of your um, decorations. You can use um, just red or blue or green or gold, whatever fabric. All right, let me turn off my lights so we can do our show and tell. I think I've done everything. I want to show you one more thing. I finished my scarf. All I have left to do I want to be able to put my hands in my scarf. So I took one of, let me see. I thought I put it in this pocket. Yes. I took a big wooden button. Let me show you. So here, the scarf goes on my head. Then I'm going to take and put a big wooden, wooden button here that I can close this off and that way when I do that I can put my hands in the pockets and still keep it closed around my neck for cold weather because I thought wait a minute if I don't have a button or something there I would have to do this well then the pocket features of this scarf aren't very usable if that's the case and one of the things I loved about making this was having quick little pockets for your hands. So anyway, but I will be sewing a wooden button on and making a yarn loop to loop right over and that way. And I love, I love this velvet yarn, chenille yarn, whatever. It is so soft. All right. So I just wanted to show you, I finished that I, it was so silly. I hated to finish it because it was so much fun to have at my fingertips to work on any time I got a few moments. So that was fun. And if you want that pattern, just email me and I'll tell you the lady from Etsy who designed it. It's like $3.53.75, something like that. And it's nice. All right. Now we'll get ready to do... Your show and tell. All right, so let me get this set up. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the amount of chunk I have on my desk. Oh, and next week I'll introduce you to an origami folding project. So next week I'll let you know what size fabric. Do you need to starch it or do you want to put interfacing? Somebody was asking me the, oh, oh, I know what it was. The person was asking me, ooh, she, was, she wants to do a landscape. And so she wanted some hints. So when we're all done with show and tell, I'll put that on there. Don't worry. And I wanted to show her the golden threads paper. Whoops. Let me get this. Move that. Sorry, moving the microphone. Sorry. All right. There we go. And this is to let me remember to teach her a little bit about making a pattern. But I was, that's, what, uh, thank goodness I remembered that I, by saying I keep 
muslin and fusibles and fusible interfacing handy because boy do I use them. All right, let's go up here and Alexis put in some great new things. Look at this. Isn't that wonderful? And I love the jewels, the pendants, and the, look at this. Isn't that great how she added things to them? I hope they sell well. They're really, really nice, Alexis. And her stitches continue to be perfection. That She is so very talented. And now, I mean, look how far she has come. And it just keeps finding new, whoops, new beautiful things to show us. Here's another one. I love these. But aren't her stitches just gorgeous? Love, love, love it. Oh, and I wanted to thank one of our members. I'm very happy that um, a member bought some more, um, bought some of the indigo fabric. And I was so tickled, so it should be to her Tuesday, and thank you. Ah, look at this. I, it was so interesting. I opened the, um, the AQS magazine, and inside is an article about indigo quilts and their place in, they were very, very popular between the 1820s and the 18. 80s or 90s but look at these isn't this i love the little antlers with the felt that is so cool i'm not sure if it's antlers or bugs little antennae she loves all kinds of the kind of like transformers and different different mythical characters and they're just wonderful and you know what it doesn't matter what is your inspiration what matters is the amazing artwork that you can learn to create and let's see what oh miss betty's angels now this will give you this is probably the last week of showing her angels but it, i love showing them this time of year because you might get some ideas and i'm wondering if the her body pieces are like pipe cleaners boy that would be easy to use but think about look at these and you might be able to come up with a few ideas of your own in fact i saw one that if i have time i would love to try but i just love her imagination and it's just fun to sit and piddle with little things like that. She's got jewels on this one, and I just love it. So way to go, Miss Betty. We love, love, love it. All right, let's see who is next. We got some new pictures this week, so let me see if I can find them. All right, Miss Carol. Miss Carol, who is our Canadian artisan and the magical touch lady, is so talented. She is a true artist. Look at her work. Just beautiful. So we're going to go and look at every one in the folder. Look at this. Isn't that great? And, you know, it sure makes a big difference. Here's, I love her old Janome featherweight. And then a purse made out of recycled jeans is that just wonderful ah and guess what thank you carol carol sent me a couple of shortcuts for scandinavian stars and the folded star thank you i've i've, I've got them up on my machine and i'm reading and learning and watching everything so thank you for thinking of me miss carol i love the creative world that everyone is so generous so thoughtful and oh i just feel so lucky to have y'all in my life so just beautiful uh, these bouillons blow me away i couldn't make one like that 
if my life depended on it. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, and her roses, they're just beautiful. And I love her Charlie Brown tree. Oh my gosh, the cute little snowman and the Charlie Brown tree. Oh, talented woman. Now, drum roll, please. This is Miss Carol's beautiful new baby that her dear sweetie pie husband insisted that she get. Don't you love those husbands? But look at this. And she's working on a crazy quilt block to test out the machine to see all the things that it will do. Oh, good. Look, she's got all the best buttons, the scissor cutter. Oh, that's lovely, hon. Needle up or down. That's wonderful. So, this is the Baby Lock Allegro. And that is that nice or what? And remember, she does um, a lot of work as a business as well. She has her YouTube channel. So, having a great machine is amazing. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this. So, so talented. And she also did a stencil painting. I love it. Love, love, love it. So, let me see. Make sure I got them all. Oh, no. There were, I think, no. Well, let me make sure. I love this close-up of the snowman and the Charlie Brown tree. Isn't that sweet? And there's one more. It's a close-up of her hot cocoa. And I love it with the stuffing batting scrap as the foam. Then look at the floss. She made a candy cane. Is that just so cute? And it looks like a painted candy cane or something down here in the corner. I love it. So, whoops. Let me see. I don't know if I... I can't get those little things to close up. Oh, well. But it's so, so cute. And I love the peppermint additions. So now, um, yes, I'll just give you a couple shot of Miss Charlene, her wonderful, wonderful mohair bears she makes. This time of year, boy, are they, they are just perfection. Okay, then the last time we're showing Miss Danielle's wonderful fall project. I think I'm going to have to urge her to send me another photo. Okay, I don't think I have anything to show you today, but Miss Debbie sent some things. Miss Debbie right now has moved from Houston to New Jersey, and she's hoping to settle, I think, Massachusetts. But she's waiting for her house to be finished. But look at these. This is in Cape May, New Jersey. I'm sure you've heard of the Cape May. Um, I'm trying to think what they're called. They're like the Gilded Ladies. And these are gorgeous Victorian houses that are a treasure of Cape May. It's a resort there. These are a treasure. And her quilt she made. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? So she's so lucky since she's staying um, with relatives in New Jersey. She gets to see all that. Look at this wonderful tree. Remember last year we made the squirrel tree? She made that for her son. And she even sized it up. It looks like a beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Okay, I think... I think that was it, but boy, we love the pictures of Kate May. Anytime she wants to show us that, that's wonderful. And Diana, Diana sent me a few other things. Now, don't forget, Diana is our designer extraordinaire of our snow globe quilt. And boy, what talent. I owe her an email, and I promise, promise, promise to, to send it to her. Oh, look at her sweet baby. Is that the, just the most precious thing? Boy, do we love our animals, our pets now. Boy, do we. This is a stack of pillowcases she's been making with her granddaughter. 
for children, sick children in the hospital. And right now, trust me, there are so many children in hospitals with the, the respiratory virus, with COVID, with the flu. If you haven't gotten your flu shot and your most updated COVID, please do. We don't want you getting so sick. She finished her happy autumn quilt. I love that. I love how she used the batiks in the, in the pumpkins and leaves and even in the tail of the turkey. But batiks, she picked out some wonderful ones to show the leaves aging in fall. Here is her sweetie block that the snow woman with her machine. Then here is her quilt, all the different blocks together. Do notice, if you don't put the vinyl on, they're a lot brighter. So keep that in mind. Okay. Pardon me. She made an infinity scarf. I've been afraid to tackle that, but she did it. And I love the cow. It looks like fleece. That is so cute. And the dog bed. And then look at this. Oh, I love these wonky trees. They are so cute. Isn't that nice? I love it. I love the the sweet uh, the sweet whimsical look of, of those. They looks like they came out of how the Grinch stole Christmas. I love them. And her, she chose good fabrics, too. Oh, and she did some good quilting. Tried different types of quilting on different fabrics. It's wonderful. Way to go. Way to go, Miss Diana. Talented, talented lady. Oh, pardon me. I was trying not to sneeze. <coughs> pardon me again. So, let's see. That's another shot of that. It's so cute. Now let's see whose turn it is next. All right. Go back up here. Miss Dolores. I do believe she sent some really awesome new things. And she's the one that started us off with, show me your holiday ornaments. Show me your de decorations. And look, voila, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Then here is a customer art, art piece, and that is just gorgeous. And fur of the dog. Oh, my gosh. I'm wondering, did she use that filing thread that you can stitch on and then take a small little metal brush and gently comb it and it will fluff up. I can't wait to try that. Look at this pop. Looking at that butterfly. If he turned and looked at us, I wouldn't even be surprised. He's so realistic. Beautiful. She does beautiful commission work. Now, she took, she lives in, in an antique house. And she wanted to do something different with the bathroom counter. Is that amazing? Those fish look so real. Oh, my gosh. I'd be tempted to feed them. Aren't they amazing? And then this is a Jin Day um, Conure, I believe. Yeah, but it's one of the parrot family that she did. A beautiful 3D fiber art portrait of amazing and then she's taking a class and i forgot the name of the teacher but she's she can if she's here she can tell you and she is doing an amazing class and so they blocked in some different fabrics and then they're going to go in and do the thread work that is spectacular thank you miss dolores you are so talented so, so talented. Okay. You know, Miss Jody. Oh, in fact, that reminds me. I better make note of that, too. 
that let me put something in an odd place there i put whoops i tried to put some blue thread up there to remind me send miss jody i think miss jody were they maybe two and a half inch three inch squares just to be safe of shirting fabrics let me see if i can bring this a little bit bigger uh, no, but shirting fabrics were very popular during the 1800s, and they were used for shirts and day dresses for men and women. So this is shirting fabric, and if if you would like to share it with her, so your some of pieces from yours, because this piece is going to have how many pieces did you say, Miss Jody? Thousands, and if you'd like to share some squares. That would be so much fun. I had a friend who made a postage stamp quilt about eight years ago, and she wanted different pieces, and she needed 2000 and something. And we all chipped in and brought little squares from home so that no two fabrics were ever repeated. But please send in your shirting squares. You might want to cut them three inches so that way she can adjust them. And um, But write me at our time to quilt at twc.com and i will then if i know you i will give you her address you can ship the the um squares to her so that would be super or if you're a member of our group um i'll get you her address but it just takes a regular envelope and a regular stamp to send probably six or eight squares so that's great all right I wanted to remind you of that for Miss Jody, And she didn't ask, but I thought, hey, let's all chip in so she has plenty of shirtings. All right. And then um, Miss Mary, I don't know if she bought one of Carol's paintings, but she wanted to show us just how amazing Miss Carol is as an artist. Isn't that beautiful? And remember I was telling you uh, Thursday about splatter painting, that maybe I could do some splatter painting on a win uh, winter quilt. And what you do is you take like something like a toothbrush or any kind of brush that's got firm enough bristles. You put the paint on, then you take your thumb and rub across it, and you'll get a splatter look. And Or you can just take something and shake over it and... That is wonderful. She's so talented. So very talented. Then Miss Mary made a block for her friend. And uh, let me see this. Whoops, 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 whoops. And the block is called Holly Thelma Lou. And isn't that precious? I love how bold she is. She just gets in there and cuts fabric and makes it happen. And you know what? That's what it's about. If you have scissors... If you have fabric, if you have a little glue, you can make any kind of collage quilt you want. She did a lot of fussy cutting of owls up in the tree. How cute is that? Okay, we're almost done. Let's see. We've got Miss Marsha. I had lost track of some of her work. Here is a wonderful crocheted piece that she did. I love that. Then she took the indigo fabric and hand stitched it into a pouch. And then this, look at this cute little thing. She sends me the sweetest little emails. And I thought, I'm going to show everybody. That is so cute. So thank you, Miss Marsha. You're a doll baby. Okay, then we'll go to Mary Zare. I heard from Miss Mary Zare recently, and she's finally gotten herself in a good place and is feeling better. And look at this amazing quilt she was working on. Doesn't that look fun? Like a stained glass crazy quilt. So she wanted to just let us know she's feeling better, and she'll probably be back on soon. Ah, oh, so I was so happy to hear from Mary. All right, Miss Melanie. Whoop, don't have anything new there, but I do, in our files, 
there are the instructions that I wrote for a class I taught in the Binding Tool Star. So if you ever want to make one of these quilts yourself, look in our files. Also, I got a notice from Groups I.O. saying, we need to cut back a few of our um, photos. So all I want you to do is cut out some of your oldest photos, okay? Don't worry. Don't start cutting out too many, but just your oldest ones so we can get the numbers down a little. But look at this. This is from Meltem from Turkey. I was so happy she was on here last week. So glad to see her. I love her work. And she says she's just a newbie, but she has got such talent. She has such a vision. This is a little boy blowing bubbles, reminding us to take time and do the little joyful things. And this is her improv quilt. Absolutely beautiful. And look at this. This is her quilt to remind us to be careful with the ocean. Because we don't want to poison the water for the fish we love so much. For all the life that lives down there. And I love her signature look, her vision. It's wonderful. Okay, thank you. And let me see. Now I'm going to go Miriam. I love some of Miss Miriam's work. And this will probably be the last time I'm showing this one. But I'm hoping she's going to have some new things to share very soon. Because I love her take on crocheting and, and combining yarn and fabric and just wonderful things. All right, Miss Nancy Lynn. I do believe. Nope, I didn't. I thought she had something new. Not yet. So we'll, we'll visit her thing again. Ah, it was Nazrin. Um, our Nazi has something new. Look at this. So I'm thinking we might need to try to make one of these. So I will work on that in the next two weeks. And let's see if we can find a way to make that. That is so cute. I love it. She's so talented. Comes up with so many bright, beautiful things. Look at that. I love that. I also, I mentioned to her, I would like to do something like this in our Art Quilt and Art Quilt Thursdays. And she said that she would love if we tried to copy something like that of hers. Look at this. Wonderful 3D effect. Her Christmas ornaments. So pretty. Look at this. I don't know if it's a... I guess it's like... Oh, it's something you can hang up. I see a little hanger. That's beautiful. And I love this swirl table runner. Look at this ornament. Beaded. Hand beaded. Isn't it? it doesn't that make such a difference? It looks like it's a felted fabric with the hand beading. Beautiful. Her attention to detail is exquisite. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And her colors. My colors for Christmas are blue and silver. So, oh my goodness. And look at this one. Michelle knows how to do that really well. I've tried it, but mine kind of get off kilter. But Michelle and Nazrin do a beautiful job. And I love the frayed ribbon on the top to give it an angel hair kind of look. Very creative. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? With the different beading. So, you know, you don't have to have anything fancy, but just spending the little time to work on it can create something of art. And this just, oh my gosh, I love this so much. And it's a Christmas tree decorated with little bits of chains and charms. And look at the polar bears. Oh, my gosh. And look, the Daddy has a scarf. And these two have um, earmuffs on. Is that cute? And I love this star thing. Shooting stars. Oh, wow. So, Nazi, that, Nazarin, that is beautiful. I have a soft spot for polar bears. Now look at her stained glass wall hanging. 
Is that beautiful? Oh, gosh, the lettering is amazing. Thank you, Miss Nazarin. Just beautiful. I tell you what, we get so many great ideas. Let me see. Did Miss Tanya, oh, her Sharon, Kitely, Knightley, um, her applique quilt is just about done. She said, I think she has two more borders. It is beautiful, Miss Polly. Beautiful. All right, let's see where else we're going to. I think I might have seen one more person. Let me see. Yes, we have a new member. At this would have reminded me. Okay, um, here is the original picture, or yeah, if I can, uh, that's the see-through top. I was wondering that looked up. Here's the original covered bridge. She wants to make it into a landscape. And so I was telling her, she, she has a good start. She took and printed it out and on separate pages. And remember how I teach if you're at all, whoops. <laughs> what is that about? I have a feeling. Let me see. Mm -mm. Oh, yay. Oh, my son just sent this in the phone. See this? This is how everybody has to applaud him. He had a cut drum strap. And I, he asked, what was the best way for him to repair it? And I told him, and he said, well, I don't have a sewing machine that can handle that. Can I do it by hand? And he already knew about the square with the X in the middle. Look what a wonderful job he did. So I will definitely have to send him applause because that is perfect. So I'll get ready when we say goodbye and send him some applause. But I love what she first did. Sue took and printed this out. And it's basically, you know, the 16-fold method that I say if, if you're nervous about drawing something, the take and print it on a piece of paper, fold it into 16 pieces, and then fold your fabric or whatever in 16 pieces, and only draw what's in this box. Then come down, only draw what's in this box. Then this box, this box. And by doing that, it makes it so simple to get a drawing. And then from there, but I told her, start out with a piece of muslin. And it's a good thing to put interfacing on the back because you're going to be, with collage quilting, you're going to be adding a lot of different fabrics and you're going to be stitching them down, which will cause the fabric to want to draw up. So if you put fusible interfacing on the back, it'll hold it nice and flat. Now, while you're looking at that real quick, let me grab out one of my rolls of Golden Threads paper. Because I'm hoping she'll watch this. But I was telling her that I keep muslin to use as a foundation. I find it very enjoyable to use muslin as a base on which to put all the other fabrics to make up a landscape quilt. And it's just nice to have something there. Now, there's this thing called, Sue, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's this thing called golden threads paper. You could use parchment. You could use thin, cheap printer paper that you tape together. Whatever you have that you can sort of see through, okay? little translucent. Oh, I did a bad thing on this one. I put a piece of masking quilt. Let me quickly put it on my blouse to take off some of the excess stickiness. This is called Golden Threads Paper, okay? And I don't know if you can... Yeah, you can see my hand through it. This stuff is amazing. It's about $11 for a roll, but it will last you your whole life. You can get it in a wider 
or you can get it in this size. And what you could do is just lay out the width and then lay additional pieces, put clear tape on it, to tape them together, so you have this as the same size as the quilt you're going to make. And then what you do when you have so a big piece of this that you've cobbled together, and you're going to draw the design of that bridge and where to put the trees and all that, just do a rough outline on this golden threads paper. So then you take this, and it's got that rough outline, and you pin it along the top to your muslin, okay, just along the top. And what you can do then is it helps add, act as a guide to where you put your other pieces of fabric, your collage pieces. And the nice thing is you lay it down, see if you put it in the right place, then you fold it back and you work. Then you can lay it back down, check and see, and then fold it back. A lot of times I'll draw a quick outline on my muslin, but the problem with just having that is you cover it up with fabric, and then you've kind of lost your compass. So any kind of translucent paper, anything you can kind of see a little bit through uh, that serves as your map, for doing the collage work underneath. And next week, I'll give you another little lesson, Sue, on, okay, what next? I also told Sue the first thing we do January 5th for Art Quilt Thursday is we're going to do another landscape. So if you have any ideas of which landscape you'd like to do, let us know. So, all right. I think... Let me get back to y'all. I'm still still on photos. Hold on. Where'd you go? <laughs> so, okay. But I just wanted to tell Sue just a couple things. And with landscapes, it's you know we're gonna we're going to introduce Miss so Sue from everything from the fabric collage to painting on the fabric, highlighting the, the, the quilt she's going to make, thread stitching, thread sewing, or painting, thread painting. And by the time she's done, it's going to be quite an adventure. So I don't know how fast she's trying to get this one done, but starting January 5th, we're going to do our own brand new landscape. Okay, everybody, any questions you might have? Oh, you know what, Carol? I thought I saved that picture. Miss Carol sent me. You did send me more pictures. I wonder where I saved them. Next week, I'm going to find the missing pictures from Miss that Miss Carol sent me because I remember last night saving them. Ah. Yes, you did. Thank you. Y'all need to remind me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I apologize. We will find Miss Carol's because what I probably did, I was tired. I think I put them in the wrong folder. <laughs> so, because I even wrote her back saying, Oh, I love how you do this. I love you. And I don't know where they went. So, anyway. Everybody, please, yes, thank you, Miss Mary. Give me a thumbs up. I work awful hard on this. And if you can, tell somebody else about me. If you think they might enjoy our get-togethers, I'd like to grow this channel a little bit more. And it is so much fun to spend time with you. Please take good care of yourself, especially this time of year when women tend to get a little overbooked. And But I don't want you getting sick with the new year. So take good care of yourself. Do something just for you. Okay? I will see you next Sunday. No more. Did you miss the trees? Oh, okay. Those of you who have to go, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to show Miss Mary the couple things that we've been working on. And um, Miss Mary had a question with some of my patterns. What was that? <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, it's not a nose. It's the edge. So 
Miss Mary, I'll show you first. But thank you for everybody else who's coming. I'm, and if you want to stay to see what I'm going to show Miss Mary, that's fine. But just know I value your friendship so much. So here is that tree. When I was able to sit down and relax, I was able to get it done right. And I was telling him, Miss Mary, I'm going to replace a couple fabrics, bring the sky down a little lower. Then I'm going to start thread painting it. I'm going to have fun. All right. Today's trees. Here we go. And I'm going to send you a picture, so don't worry, Miss Mary. Today's trees. Okay, I hope you can, let me see, yeah, I hope you can see it good, and because I can't ever do anything halfway, I'm making mine into a table runner, extraordinary, so I'm going to add a whole nother grouping down here, <laughs> but go back and watch this, Miss Mary, because I take you through showing you exactly why, what, when, and I placed a couple of the trees so i love that quilt plus there's nothing better than our snow globe so you can look back but don't worry miss mary i'm gonna post pictures anyone that wants patterns pictures of it just send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com i'm tired now i'm gonna go paint ornaments bye-bye y'all and eat calda verde. Mmm, yum. Bye-bye. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Have a good one. Take good care.